What's up, everybody? Welcome to 6-Minute Horror Movie Reviews, where I review a typically lesser-known horror movie in about 6 minutes. Spoilers will be contained throughout this video, so if you haven't seen this movie, or you wish to not have the events of this movie spoiled for you, click off the video. But if you're okay with spoilers, let's begin. This review will be about Piranha, released in 1978 and directed by Joe Dante. Much like Grizzly, which came out in 76, Piranha is another killer animal flick released in the aftermath of Jaws, as if the poster didn't make that obvious. And no, this movie is no Jaws, but it's quite entertaining. So let's dig in. The movie begins with a couple skinny dipping. I know, who could have possibly seen that coming, right? Well, these two idiots are skinny dipping in the restricted area of an old abandoned military installation. And here's a bit of advice for you moviegoers. If your horror movie begins with people skinny dipping in a restricted military area, don't get too attached to them, because they're probably going to die. And of course, these two do. After these two geniuses come up missing, our protagonist, Maggie, is tasked with finding out what happened to them. So she decides to hire a man named Paul, who is a drunk guy that lives off in the woods to help her track them down. They enter an old abandoned military compound that used to be used for breeding fish. They find some bizarre creatures in jars around the place, and Maggie finds a switch to drain the water so she can search the bottom. As she does this, the two are attacked by a man who's seemingly bent on stopping them. The man isn't successful, however, and the water is drained, and we see the skeletons of the two dead skinny dippers in the water's filter. The man who attacked them manages to steal their jeep, but shortly afterwards crashes it due to being a bit disoriented. Maggie and Paul find the man and take him back to Paul's place where they all stay the night. The next morning they take a makeshift raft down the river. As the man awakes, he warns them not to get into the water as it's full of flesh-eating piranha now, as a result of Maggie filtering the water back at the military compound. Naturally, they find all of this pretty hard to believe considering the climate and all the factors involved, but when they come across the corpse of a man missing his lower half on a nearby dock, they realize what they're in for. We learn that the man is actually a doctor named Dr. Hoke, who was a scientist working on a military project that was to be used during the Vietnam War to attack the Viet Cong, and the operation was called Razor Teeth. And basically, the piranha were bioengineered to survive different climates. Now, the real problem is if the local dam gets opened, the piranha can spread all across the local river, including a summer camp nearby where Paul's daughter Susie is staying. They come across a tipped over canoe where a young boy has just watched his father be savagely torn to pieces by the piranha. Dr. Hoke jumps into the water to rescue the boy and succeeds, but not without being critically wounded by the fish. As his blood drips through the raft, the piranhas start tearing the raft apart. In a close call, Maggie and Paul manage to escape, eventually stop the dam from being opened, and alert the military. The military attempts to poison the piranha, but it ultimately fails. The military then lock down Maggie and Paul for fear that they'll alert the media. Meanwhile, the piranha reach the summer camp and viciously maul everyone in the water. And if you're down to see children being ripped apart by flesh-eating fish, then you're in for a real treat here. These piranha do not discriminate based on age or gender. It's all good to them. They really fuck some kids up in this movie. After the fish get their fill at the summer camp, they keep moving downriver to a local resort, where the manager who has been warned about the piranha has ignored all those warnings, and his guests are in the water. Geez, where have I seen all this before? Of course, he's later alerted that all of his guests are being eaten alive by swarms of piranha. Maggie and Paul realize that if these engineered piranha get too much further down the river, that they can reach the ocean, and from there they can go anywhere they want in the world. To prevent this, the two of them take a boat out to a smelting plant at a narrow part of the river. The idea is to open the refuge tanks that are submerged underwater and just cross their fingers that the industrial waste will kill the school of flesh-eating fish. Paul barely makes it out of this alive, but it appears to have worked. Or did it? The film ends with a view of the ocean and the chilling sounds of piranha feeding. I must say, I really enjoyed this movie. Sure, it's no Jaws, but that's really too high of a standard for creature movies like this. The movie paces well, and it's enjoyable to watch. I think as far as concepts go, a school of piranha in a lot of ways is scarier than a giant shark. Your odds of surviving a single giant fish is much greater than avoiding hundreds of smaller killer fish. The way the water churns when the piranhas attacks is pretty horrifying, combined with the piranha sound effects and all the blood. The water almost looks like it's boiling when they attack. This movie even has the balls to slaughter children by the boatload. 
That's always impressive. And this is a very solid B movie, and I would recommend it for anyone interested in Jaws, if you liked Grizzly, or even if you just want to see little kids die violent deaths. I'd give Piranha a 7.5 out of 10. My only real cons with it are that I'd like to see a bit more damage done to the Piranha themselves. They're basically never even scathed by the military or by our protagonists, though I guess it does sort of make them more intimidating as a threat. The story is simple without being boring, but it kind of feels like the ending is a little weak. I mean, Jaws had such good closure, as did Grizzly with the bazooka, and maybe I do feel like it just needed a little bit better of an ending, but then again, the they could have reached the ocean and spread across the globe ending is pretty fucking doomy, so I'm happy with it. If you watched this movie, I'm curious to know what you thought about it. Do you think that it was better than Grizzly? Do you think it was better than Jaws? And what's your favorite killer animal movie? But anyways, that does it for this one, but there's more on the way. As for this video, if you like it, give it a like. For the channel, if you like what I'm doing here, be sure to subscribe for more content. And with YouTube screwing up how subscriptions work, be sure to hit the bell and click show all notifications to be reminded when new content is available. And if you really love what I'm doing, you can support the channel on Patreon. The link is in the description. But until next time, later y'all.